how to create noise textures using the Perlin noise. First thing to do, go to the layer menu and new layer. Let's just fill it with something. I'm just going to fill it with a gradient. Yeah, let's go to the gradient tool and just fill it with a basic gradient. Once you've done that, what you can do, I'm going to use macros. The key panels go to the view menu, studio and layers and macro. I'm going to record all the steps and I'm going to play it back maybe multiple times. So press the record button in the macro panel. Go to the filters menu. Noise and purling noise. Now I'm going to be doing this a lot. And also I'm going to duplicate the layer a lot as well. So there's the initial setting. You can modify the zoom. You can modify the octaves and also persistence as well as the blend mode. And I'm going to use difference for the blend mode. Click apply. And that's been stored away in the macro. You can see it there. I'm just going to go to a layer menu. And I'm going to duplicate the layer. So layer and duplicate. From this point, obviously no difference. And also I'm going to change the blending mode. Now I could go with light and dark and etc. I'm going to go with difference. At the moment, of course, there's no difference whatsoever. So it's just black. But now if I go to filter menu and noise and purling noise, you can see by straight away, by applying that, you can create some interesting designs simply by also just simply by changing the zoom, octaves, etc. Click OK, click apply. Again, layer menu and duplicate. Go to filters and again, obviously, pearly noise. And you can keep doing this over and over again. You see what happens, of course, is this has been stored in the macro. And you can just vary the zoom, etc. And apply it. Exactly as before, again, it's using difference. Duplicate it again. And again, there. The blend modes for each of these layers is different. Every time you create a new layer, it will still be different. Again, do it again, and then just keep varying the values. Obviously, up to you how you vary. I'm not going to describe the best setting, zoom or persistence, all those sort of things. Just use your experiment. Experiment, just see what works. You think, wow, that looks great approach in something that I really, really like. And again, you can again go to layer menu and duplicate. And you can see now you're getting some really unusual artifacts appearing in there. And again, you can do exactly the same. Now, of course, you could blend in some other effects as well. Maybe use the distortions, deform, etc. You don't have to keep just doing purling noise. You could modify it slightly. They're just layers, so you can also, if you want to, you can go back to those layers. Again, apply that. You can always go back to any of the layers and maybe change them. Maybe change the blending mode. Maybe go to lighten, etc. Or maybe apply effects to them. Maybe a blur, etc. Go to the layer menu and duplicate the design again. And then I'll be working with that one. Use purling noise again and vary the zoom, etc. Keep varying the settings. Just modify them, experiment. This is all being recorded by the macro. So purling noise just on its own is good. It's really good. But multiple times, multiple layers, you can really create some very unusual combinations. Again, layer menu and duplicate. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do this for forever. Just keep doing it. And I'm obviously doing it six or seven times. You could do it 50 times, up to you. Once you're happy with it, you can stop. But that isn't the end of what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to. So just apply that again. What you can do, you can flatten it all this, merge everything into a single layer. 
So you've got your macro. I'm going to stop now. I'm going to stop the recording. I don't want to do any more because it looks pretty good. It's gone pretty well. But I want to extend it even more. But I don't want to modify the macro. But I'm going to use the macro. That's what I want to do. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to merge them all. There's no flatten particularly. But I'm just going to go with merge visible. So it's all been merged and, and you've got all these other layers. I'm just going to remove those. You could, of course, keep them. Perfect reasonable. I don't want them. I'm just going to delete them. And you've got your design there. What you can then do, of course, you can run the macro. You can use what you've got. You've got that design there. Just run the macro. Run it three, four, ten times. And you can see as you run it, it creates some very weird painterly-like artifacts in there. And you can run it again. You run it again. Maybe run it 10, 15 times. Just keep running it until you're happy with the design you get. And it will keep creating really weird, wonderful textures. And of course, it will create lots of layers as well. Just noticed on playback that I should have merged visible, not merged down. Merge visible is the command that I should have used. What I've done, I've just deleted the layers. So it wasn't a good idea. So merge visible is the command, and then you would get the proper design. That's why the image changes when I delete all the layers. At any point, you can always go to Filters menu, Colors, and Auto Levels, just to brighten it up a bit. It's always a bit gray, the design. You can now see the texture a little bit clearer. You can again go back to the macro and run it again and again. Run it five times, ten times, up to you. Of course, once you do that, it creates lots of layers. You now have this lovely texture. What you can do, of course, you can go to the layer menu and merge visible. Unlike last time where I merged down. Once you applied your merge visible, what you can do, you can go to the layers panel and just delete all of the lower layers. Select them all and then just delete them. You can also leave the layers. They're not visible. You can still maybe go back to and use them later and combine them in different ways. You now have your lovely texture, but of course you can continue to work with more macros, etc. You could recolor it using the adjustment layers by the layers menu, or if you just want to brighten it up, go to the filters menu, colors, and auto levels. You can always add adjustment layers, perhaps then export the design in maybe a different color, and then delete the adjustment layer. Go back to the macro panel and then run it again. And you can apply it multiple times. It doesn't have to be just once. Thousands of different textures can be generated simply by reapplying this macro over and over again. And of course, you can always create a different macro if you wish as well. Save them to the assets panel or export them. Also, what you can do, again, go to the layer menu and merge visible. You can always leave the layers, but I always generally delete them. You can always make them not visible if you wish. Also, I'm just going to brighten it up a bit again. Filters menu, color, and auto levels. At any point, you can always apply other filters. You don't have to just keep applying the macro over and over again. You can distort the design as well. What you can do, you can go to the filters menu, distort, and deform. What you can then do is add some pins to the image and then just distort it in all kinds of ways. Maybe drag it off, just create subtle variations. Just makes the texture look more interesting, I think, than just a blanket texture design. You can also change the linear constraint. That creates also some very interesting variation. Continue to add pins and modify the design. You can create some really beautiful marble-like textures as well as painted effect designs with this approach. And of course, once you've created that, once you've deformed it, what you can do, you can continue to add macros, etc. as well as, of course, saving it to your assets, as well as saving it to a file. Apply, and then what you can do, you can maybe add some color to it via the layers menu and adjustment layers. 
You can also add additional filters. Maybe go to the filters menu and blurs and Gaussian blur. You can add a subtle blur or maybe a complete blur. Maybe use selections as well. Once you've applied your blur, etc., what you can do, you can go back to the macro panel and run it again. Just keep running it, applying more and more textures. Perhaps run it three or four times. Up to you. Then go to the layer menu and merge visible. So all the layers are combined into a single one at the top. And if you wish, delete all the layers that are lower. Go to the layers panel and remove them. You don't have to do that. You can't see them because it's normal for blending mode. To brighten it up again, go to the filters menu, colors and auto level. You can then go back to your macro panel and run it again and again and again, again developing more and more textures using that macro. Of course, always remembering to either save them to the assets or export the design. If you want to add some color to it, maybe use the brushes or perhaps go to the layer menu, new adjustment layer and recolor. I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel, always adding new tutorials about Affinity Photo, Photoshop, Illustrator and many, many others. Please add some comments, dislike or like. Thank you much.